Love is felt most when it's genuine. I had a whole lot of people in my life. Now I'm going to get my gospel songs in there. 
This is my favorite. Goodness. Hey Troy. Good afternoon. It's your boy Thug Money. And this is Jeanette, owner of Jazzy Cakes. How you doing today? First and foremost, I'd like to give honor to God and his son for waking me up this morning because he didn't have to every time. So he didn't have to. So what about you? I'm just blessed and thank God for everything that's going on and happening. A lot of good things. I can't complain. Okay, okay. So uh, today we're going to be getting in a couple of things. But if you haven't done it already, please share. Let other people tap in to... Uh, keeping it real with the various conversations and you can comment down below and we will say what you said so everyone can hear and we are still taking up for our charity yes please because we have we have people up here that didn't donate which I love listening to it. <laughs> and we're trying to expand the viewers so when we do get in the building with Roku TV and Apple TV, we can tell y'all to subscribe over. But we need y'all help. Yes. So our first topic is, somebody asked us last week, how do we feel about, how do we feel about letting family and friends into your relationship? Because a lot of the family doesn't like the significant others when a person in box doesn't ask us that so how do you feel about it you can take over on this one i feel i feel your problems should be your problems you shouldn't be going around and telling people in your family because it's always a one-sided story and with that one-sided story you don't never tell the good side uh you always tell the side that that is incorrect or wrong um and it's never a positive feedback. And then you tell your side of the story and you don't even tell the person what you did. You just tell, you tell your family and friends what the other person did. And now you have the family and friends hating that person when you're going to be right back with that person that you're with, that you're talking about. Yeah, I just feel like it's two sides to every story. And that's true. You got your friends and family looking at your significant other because of what you told them and you're really not done yet. So I just feel like if you're really not done, then don't start telling all the negative stuff. Don't tell all the business. I mean, I can understand you're going to vent to family members and friends. One thing I never do is tell their, tell my friends or family members to leave that person because at the end of the day, you really don't know their situation and you don't know if they're going to still stay together and leave. Like this person that expressed her uh, self to us over the weekend, she started taking up for him in the end, even though her family hates him and can't stand him or whatever. So I just feel like, you know, keep it amongst yourself until you know you're really done. You're really done. Because that person that you're with, they could have done everything good in the world except for a couple of things and you go run to your family and then that their family your family don't like that person whatsoever. Like no gives, no gives F's about them or her. Like it's just it's a done deal. And honestly, if you do have a problem and you can't solve it, I suggest you go to counseling rather than you know, uh, your family member, or your friends, because counseling will not stare you wrong. Um, it's free counseling out there for people that don't know. If if their pockets are kind of low, their money looking funny, you know. Or you can talk to your pastor. You can talk to your pastor or you can talk to that person that you know isn't going to judge you, that, you know, that's really loyal to you. 
So that's where we're at on that one. Okay, the next one is also when getting in a relationship, should you be up front and tell people, tell the other person, you know, what you want, what you expect of them? Do you want an open relationship? I mean, or what? How, how would you? For one, if I'm coming in and I suggest strongly because feelings can get involved and will get involved, tell that person up front when you're first talking, whether you want a friendship, relationship, or an open relationship. It's communication because a lot of men, I know, for instance, will get in a relationship and they don't even want a relationship. They might want an open relationship or a friendship. But they start cheating on their girlfriends and the girlfriends start cheating on them. Why do all that when you can just kill the problem the first time y'all meet and discuss what what y'all really want out of each other? But sometimes guys ain't real and women. Sometimes women love harder than men. You know? Sometimes it's probably just a game to them. You know, you tell them one thing and then you do the opposite. You know, so... Me personally, you always should tell the truth because if you tell the truth, you can probably have both of them. All you got to <laughs> do is tell the truth. But men don't understand that and they want to get caught up in something where they don't, they don't have to because a lot of these women do like girlfriends, but they're not going to say because a man going to come up to you and straight lie. Why lie when you can have two, three of them by just telling the truth? All right. I mean, some women not going to go for it, but it's always... Tell, tell the truth. Shame the devil. Shit. You ain't got to lie for a piece of cat. You really okay. don't. Poor JJ. Okay. Any thoughts, anybody out there on that? That's watching or have anything to say? Okay. Our next topic is about spicing up your relationship and your sex life. Uh -huh. Spice it up, spice it up. You can't be born in bed, trust me, you cannot. Yeah. It's just a simple known fact. Too boring you want to you want <laughs> to boring be, people. <laughs> you wanna be exciting. You know, spice it up a little bit. Go buy toys, go buy lingerie. Men, they got stuff for men out there. Please. Please, because if you don't, somebody gonna incite your partner. Trust me, somebody is gonna incite them, and they gonna they nose and their eyes gonna follow right along. Spice it up, spice up your relationship. Go out, do do kinky stuff. You know that y'all feel comfortable with. You know me personally, you ain't gotta always have sex in the house. It's just you know spice it up. Go have sex in public. In cars, whatever the case may be, spice it up. But come on, you can't just be born and then just lay on your back. Like, what you got to say about that? Sounds like we got a lot of friends that uh, <laughs> got relationship problems. Is <laughs> always asking us to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, just spice it up. Like you said, bring out the whipped cream, bring out the chocolate, whatever you got to do. And if you're nasty, just tell your partner you're nasty. You don't got to be afraid because that your partner might might be nastier than you. And then there you go. Boom. There goes the you chemistry. You know, I've always been a true believer. What goes on in the bedroom stays in the bedroom. So, hey, live it up. Do what you do to make it work. And, yeah. Yeah. And don't be afraid. If you eat booty, you eat booty. If you don't, you don't. But you ain't got to go around here. Oh, that's nasty. That's nasty. Man, somebody like it. Trust me, somebody like it. Like Trick Daddy have, uh, he got his game, the Eat Booty Game. He yeah. said he'll tell you quick. If you don't eat your girl butt, he will. Who ain't Trick? Who ain't Trick? But all I'm saying is spice up your relationship. Don't be boring. All right. Okay. Who is the dominant one in your relationship? Who's dominant? Me. 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 We're equal. Mm. We're equal. Hmm. Mm. You don't think we're equal? I think we're equal. Mm. How can you know who's the dominant one? I mean, you... How you can, just say I'm bossy. She is bossy. Bossy <laughs> a lot. 
I am bossy. I'm, I'm gonna work on that one day. But the dominant ones, the dominant one take over a lot of stuff. Like dominant one, dominant one would pay bills, whatever the case may yeah, be. You can, yeah, you can to... be that dominant person. You, <laughs> you can take on that part. Now, at points of time, I don't like being dominant in a room. I mean, I will like her to take it over sometimes. It's just what it is. How you go about that? Who's the dominant one in that? You know, it's mm -hmm. all in role play, which people have to understand. Role play goes a long way. <laughs> okay, enough of the relationship stuff. I'm sure people inbox us and be asking us next week. Get the whips and chains. Swings. <laughs> Tell me, it does wonders. Anyway, you talk a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next, let's talk about our health and well-being during COVID. Health. How's everybody taking care of their health? I mean, it's real. We got the new one that's out, too. But I say health-wise, make sure you wear your mask. Make sure you wash your hands. Sanitize all the time. Um, don't go in crowded spaces. Keep your social distancing. You know, because a lot of people don't social distance. I do. I don't go nowhere unless I have to. That's just a work at home. But COVID is real. And it's taking, us, taking a lot of our people out. Because people aren't following the rules. And, and it doesn't mean that you have to go out and buy the most expensive stuff. A little bleach and water. Sanitize, sanitize, wipe down everything. Spray your doors, handles, and... Your hands and everything. Wear gloves. Oh, the thing I do want to say about gloves. I understand we're having to wear gloves. People are wearing gloves to touch things, this and that. But if you don't have gloves to keep throwing away and putting on, just wash your hands because you're really carrying the germs and stuff back with you. I see people all day wear the same, wear gloves. The same gloves, touching everything, going to the bathroom and this and that. That's not healthy. And that's not sanitary. So, wash your hands, people. It ain't all about the gloves. Just wash your hands. Wash, wash, wash. Because I wash all the time. My hands is always in soap and water. So, my, our next subject is good. This is your subject that you can really talk about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Legalizing weed in Virginia. It's about time. I mean, Virginia is behind time on that. Behind time on everything. But uh, as far as Virginia-wise... Uh, we're getting to the point where they're going to be dropping all the charges. I know as of right now, we can have a half and below, and we only get fined $25, but a half <laughs> and over is still a, a, a charge. When I don't understand why, you know, they they really won't legalize weed. Well, I do understand why, but they legalize all these other drugs that you can kill yourself on, but weed, you can't even kill yourself. It's, it's a plant-based <laughs> but everybody holler, it's a drug, it's a drug, it's a drug. It's not a drug. It's plant based. What what is a drug? A drug is a man made chemical. That's what a drug is. Weed is from the ground, huh? Correct. Even honestly, um Hey Sonya. There's another one that's that's made from the ground. But that's supposed to help you, but they turn it into an actual chemical to use. So, but other than that, like, I, I love weed. I'm not even, I just love weed. Like yeah, when, I, when I go to Maine, look, my first trip to Maine, I was scared as hell. Um, smoking my blunt out in public. I'm looking around, looking around. My uncle pull up, like, what you doing, nephew? I said, man, if you want to put that. Now, you're like, man, it's legalized out here. Smoking in front of cops and everything. I'm like, oh. So, my mentality, when I get to Maine, I'm just wide open when it comes to Maine. But when I get back here, mm, it, it ain't like that, you know. But the good thing is they can't pull you over for the smell of weed now. They can't now do your business that. is good in Maine. Yeah. So, with that, uh, we're starting, we're getting ready to start our own strand of weed that will be in stores. 
So hopefully everything go well with that. So got a lot of good things. Got to turn stuff around in twenty twenty one. Yes, yes, yes. So what else? What else we got? Besides you being above here. Yeah, I smoke too much. I smoke entirely too much. He but, does. You know. I'd rather see you smoke weed than be out there on something else and a drunk. I'm scared to do anything else. Yeah. I don't do nothing. Never have and never will. Just more for me. More weed for you me. You have it. And I love it. But some of these kids and people going crazy over weed. I mean, I don't understand it. Some can't eat unless they smoke. Some can't function. Y'all functioning weed heads around here. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know. Hey, James, Dylan. Hey, Ryan. So, yep. Any given day, you going to see me with a blunt. That's just a no. Who said fact. they tried to quarantine? Sisley said, I think I'm doing well. I'm exposed to it at work. She's talking I about her COVID. Really. At work all the time, so I try and quarantine, but I miss my grandbaby still up in the air in the vaccine. I'm just counting the people who post they got they got seven they got something. Oh, they have we have reached the seventy percent yet. Hey James Woody. Well, Sicily, I haven't took the vaccine. I think our job is offering. I'm not gonna take it either. I'm scared best. to take it. I, I'm just gonna be honest with everybody. I'm scared to take it because Hell, people's dying from that vaccine, too. It's a lot. There's a lot of people dying, and there's a lot of side effects that come with that vaccine. They, like, it's been a couple of nurses and a couple of doctors. I know one doctor so far hey, has Ryan passed County. away. But other ones, you know, they've gotten real sick right before they, um, they, got, the, they got the shot, and the shot, Got them sick before they can even catch the COVID. Yeah, before they can get the second round. That's what it was out here. But a lot of jobs is offering it out here. But I'm just, I'm going to decline. I'm not going to take it. I'm good. So. I stay away and follow follow all the procedures and protocols. Uh -huh. So, and pray about it every day. And y'all really don't know, like, all these... Yeah, Ryan, I'm scared, too. He, Ryan said he's scared himself. But all these vaccinations that they come out with, it really kills our body slowly, which they don't tell you, but you have to read in fine print. It really kills our that. body slowly. It really does. Because I'm not taking it. So we have multiple vaccination shots. You got the flu shot. I can't tell you. What else we got? But you got to take all these protocols every year before you can get in school. All of this. I'm not going to do it. I stay away. If I'm not performing, guess where I'm at? At home or at the restaurant. That's it. So while we've been cooped up, everybody, in COVID, what projects have y'all been doing? you do-it-yourself projects. My doing myself project. I'm Which learning family? more about myself and learning more about my wife. Yeah, you do learn about each other a lot more. So do you get on each other's nerves? She get on mine a lot. He gets on my D nerves bad sometimes. Yeah, I sure do. Sometimes I pick with her just because. You know, I just come bother her just because I get bored because I'm cooped up in the house. Yeah, I think a lot of people is. Yes. Bored, ready to do stuff. I hate because I can't travel no more. I haven't even been able to go shopping. And I think that's, I'm working on that anyway. I'm kind of glad I can't go shopping because I'm, you think I'm a shopaholic? Mm hmm No, really, do you? Mm hmm I haven't been able to go to D.C., Potomac Mills, nowhere. Mm hmm I'll just be here. I think I'll go to Walmart. You know, Walmart's one of my favorite places just to look around, but I hate it too at the same time. No, I, I hate it on different days. I hate Walmart on different days. The first to the fifteenth, I hate Walmart. Yeah, let me just say that. Walmart is a club. I mean, you see any and everything. <laughs> yeah, you do see a lot at Walmart. Oh, Ryan said people are really crazy over weed. They are, Ryan. I sit back and especially I'm one these, of them. and I be sitting seeing these kids too. They are really gone. 
on, on, on one of them because I cannot, I cannot, I got to have a blunt when I get on the toilet. I got to have a blunt before I uh, eat. I got to have a blunt when I wake up in the morning. I just have to have one every. He just one big <laughs> fat ass blunt. That's what that is. Just one big fat blunt. So, and that's sad too. It's not sad. It's just, it's, <laughs> it copes with me. And it helps you cope. <laughs> yeah. you get, it you, copes make, with me. Makes you use your coping skills. <laughs> and <laughs> honestly, people say I'm, I'm much calmer when I smoke because when, when I don't. What? Y'all don't see oh, Michael. Y'all see Thug Money. And that's a bad You see somebody looking sad <laughs> and like, oh man, I got to smoke. I'd be like, what's wrong with you? I need weed. I need my weed today. Oh, okay. I just mm. bypass and go about my business because I don't need it to function. So, yeah, that's just me. I'm high on life. <laughs> I'm high on weed all the time. <laughs> that's sad. It's not. Yeah, it is. It's not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's crazy. But I will never stop. I'm going to smoke until I die. Mm-hmm. And y'all better have blunts rolled up on my cast. <laughs> That's crazy. Very serious. Everybody's got a cone with a blunt. Mm-mm. Nah, you'd be decked out in your suit. You wouldn't even know. I don't want no suit. <laughs> you, you wouldn't know what I did. I don't want no suit. You'd be dead. <laughs> you would know what I did. Dress me in Funny. thug money. Uh huh. What, like Robin and, and um, Dominique always say, Who am I talking to today? Mm-hmm. Michael Thug Money. <laughs> so, this is. Probably about your government name. <laughs> No, nah, people normally call me money. I don't really give my government name out, not unless it's very important. Yeah. But uh, anybody uh, ask me, what's your government name? Money. Your, your mama <laughs> didn't name you that. Name you that. You're right. It's thug money. <laughs> they and she didn't mad. name you that either. <laughs> they be getting mad, but you're not getting my government. You can have my government because I don't do nothing. Okay, who y'all? <laughs> money. I don't care how old I get. Money. Oh yeah, like Chick Fil A. They know you by money at Chick Fil A. Mm-hmm. Have you ever met a person <laughs> that feels like they have to eat Chick Fil A every day? I do. Every day. Ryan said, "If it helps, he's all for it." The weed, Ryan. It helps a lot. But yeah, Chick Fil A. He has to. He eats this every. I can't do that every day. Every day. I if can. it was open today, it's Sunday. He would be there too. Hey, Laura. You ain't lying about that. Cause sometimes I be forgetting and be closed. I be trying to use my reward points. And oh yeah. They be saying closed. I'm like, Man. I ain't never seen nobody having too many points. That means he's eating it when I'm not around too. <laughs> <laughs> I go breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, you do. So. But one thing I do, I'm not a macaroni and cheese eater, but they do have good mac and cheese. When she put me on the mac and cheese, I won't really worry about nothing else. I have a straight setting. For breakfast, they, uh, I have the uh, Chick-fil-A biscuit with their little... Uh, not a biscuit eater. <laughs> but their biscuits be so soft, it be so moist. It be all warm. I mean, it be hot, like piping hot. Man, look, I'm going to tell you like this. If it came down to it, I'd take out McDonald's. McDonald's hardest don't have not nothing on Chick-fil-A. Nothing. Burger King, nothing. Well, I do like a good Whopper. Chick-fil-A. Mm-mm. I can't eat chicken like that. Well, my sister can. She can, eat, she can eat chicken seven days a week if you let her. Well, she will. I'm not a chicken eater like that. I am. I know. The number one. <laughs> With the Alma Palmer. Mm-hmm. It's good. Mm-mm. I'm more of the sweets at Chick-fil-A. They do got a killer brownie. In which I don't need it. But I do. Rewards points. <laughs> I can't never use my Chick-fil-A rewards points because you always using yours. True. True, true, true. So, somebody who... Diana said, Jeanette, why make some good mac and cheese... Who is why? I'm just trying to say you. Oh, oh, sorry. Y'all know I'm slow on these things. These kids got to be telling me about these little different whys and the views and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
But she do. She makes some good everything. Yeah. I take pride in my little cooking. I learned from the best. Well, she was the best to me, my granny. He said, that's smart because somebody steal your name. Very much so. That's why I say money. Money. Ain't nobody going to steal Jeanette. There's too many of them out there. And then, especially if you know me, my favorite line is tighten up. I don't care who it is. The first thing I say, they say, hey, I should tighten up. But that's my form of saying hello, goodbye, tighten up. That's just what it is. Some people get offended. I don't care. Who said that? Cicely said it's still on trial. She's talking about her COVID. It's still on trial. I just don't like the slogan they put behind it now saying, do your part by getting vaccinated. Shaking my head. Nope. But thank you for taking it. <laughs> I told you, Cicely, I'm not taking it. So. Hey, that slogan sounds like a dog. Vaccinating your dog. Hmm. I'm not doing it. Sean, hi Sean. Drew, hey Drew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who said? Oh, Diana said my collard greens are all that. Yeah, got that from Lizzie. It's all about that meat that goes in there. Mm -hmm. He hey, said my I food looks good. Thanks, Ryan. I try. Well, I was on the grill. When was it? Day before yesterday? He did good. I had to give it to him because yeah, I needed I, help. And I don't cook. I'm the deliv delivery person. I don't cook, but my sandwich is so good. There's my beautiful baby. Hey, Shyla Ray. Yeah, you did good. You're sold. I had oh, to give it to him. No. He did. He's all of them sold. Yeah. Drew said, Arthur learned from your mama. She was an awesome cook. Yeah, Nellie was. She was. She cooked good. <laughs> but nobody cooked like Lizzie. Shyla. Shyla, when you come back down here to visit me? I miss Shyla. We had some good times when old Shyla came down. <laughs> Ryan said, we all do need to tighten up. I do anyway. Me too, Ryan. I need to tighten up on some things. I tell people that, oh, tighten up. He need to take his own advice and tighten the hell up. Tighten up. She said, Shyla said she need to trip it. ASAP. We do. Shyla, you know what? We need to do like a cousin's cruise or a cousin's trip. But I got to get my rhyme right. You going to Mexico in April? I want to go. But I do have a question, though. Like, if, if you and your significant other run a restaurant, <laughs> and y'all have, you know, set things that y'all do, um, I don't think if you're training someone, if you're finished Tell training... Your brother. Okay. If you're finished training that person on what you want to do and that next person, that next person is trying to train, I don't, me personally, I don't Thanks, think Laura. you should butt in that your significant other should butt in, you know, because that's, that's a sign of you y'all not communicating together and that's a sign of, you know, just. Right okay, on. I jumped in. <laughs> I was spade to spade. Okay, I jumped in. He was training this guy that he was training this guy that um, we had hired, and he told him something. But the guy had uh, he turned around and asked me, didn't he? I jumped no, in. She jumped in. I did. I jumped in. I'm I'm kind of a control freak over my stuff. I really am, and I'm learning. But yeah, maybe I shouldn't have jumped in. Well, I'm saying I shouldn't have jumped in. I should have went ahead and let him handle it. But you know. He did. I apologize. It's okay. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, that's what that was. Why are you just say Jeanette jumped in? Well, she did. <laughs> I did. But that confuses the employee. It did. It didn't confuse him, but it does. It would. So, I don't I, I think y'all should... Well, she should keep it at a minimal. After she finished with him and I take him over, that don't mean jump in. I know, I know. I did too. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. My edges is going back. So, what else we got to talk about? Oh, who you think going to win that Super Bowl, y'all? Who y'all going for? I guess I'm going to go for Kansas City now because... For one, we got to wait till the NFC Championship is over. Yeah, you know? but... We got my boys, the Tampa Bay, playing against Ooh. the Green Bay, which the Green Bay going to lose. Well, Steelers ain't in it. So, I guess I'm going to have to go for Kansas City. And I guess I'll go for your sucky ass team. I'll take Buffalo 
over Kansas. You are? Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm just going to take Kansas City because that's where all my family's from. So go to the Bucks. And I was born there, so I'll just do Kansas City. I really don't care because the Steelers ain't in it. But it is what it is. Shit. Sure. I hope the Bucks win because when I was playing ball, that's why I was hoping I was going to go to the Bucks before I got injured. You know, I had to work my way up. But I got injured. Hey, Tara. Yeah. So I'm just going to sit here and don't care about the games today. But I am going to fry some chicken and do some yams and some greens and cornbread today. Ryan said, don't make the cook mad. I get mad all the time. Yeah, I still cook because I like Ryan. I'm a fat girl. I like to eat. I be wanting all my calories. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. But we're going on a uh, diet. Starting tomorrow. I got to go back because the doctor said I need to lose some weight. So I can You're already looking like a crackhead. Yeah, you have lost a lot of weight. But I gotta go do it. For but myself. we're gonna do it together because I know I'm an enabler. Very much so. But that don't mean you gotta drink it or eat it. I fuss at her about bringing stuff in the house and she don't but, care. But he doesn't have to eat it. It's not for him. Stop bringing it in. The but house it's not and for you. But it's not for you. Stop bringing it in. The you house. gotta have that willpower. Yeah, so we'll stop bringing it in the house. I am. We gonna have nothing but fruit and stuff now. Hey, we're gonna do them can... smoothies. Hey, we're going on the JJ smoothie thing again. This cleanse. I finally got all the fruit that I can eat without breaking out, having an allergic reaction. We was so doing we're gonna, good. We was. She was, look, we was getting all the healthy food, even though it cost a little bit more. Clean eating. But she we was wasn't bringing clean. stuff in the house. So now it's to the point, like, she started bringing stuff in the house. We were supposed to been on our diet, but she bringing stuff in the house, bringing stuff in the house. Can't do that. Like, you can, you just can't do that. That's like, if she say, Mike, I'm on a diet, and I start bringing in. Uh, you uh, ate uh, chocolate first. See what I mean? That's that's how we get into it. Just like that. <laughs> Look, you no. did it first. But you went in the store and you got you you came out with a candy bar or something like that. And I was like, well, why you didn't bring me one? You was like, you on a diet. <laughs> well, hell, we supposed to be doing this together. Teamwork makes a dream work, right? <laughs> oh, so I decided yeah. to go in there and get, <laughs> get my little whatever I buy. I don't even want to mm -hmm. I bought something that I shouldn't have ate, but and that's where it started off. And I've been doing it ever since. I was doing really good, but I'm going to get back on it because I got to get my sexy back. Because I'm a little chunky, chunk, chunk. I just want my stomach going. That's my problem. I don't care about it. I ain't got no problem with my legs, my butt, my arms, none of that. It's a gut. Everything goes to the gut. Mm -hmm. That's all right because it's going to be gone by my birthday. Mm -hmm. Tell me, Tuck's getting ready to come. Mm -hmm. Yep. But so what else? What else we got? What else? Your problems you got? <laughs> oh, yeah. What else? What other problems I got? Yeah. No, the problem I got, I'm I'm about ready to uh, blow a gasket with that daggum car and my $1,700 BMW, people. Keep taking all my money. Mm-hmm. So, Luxury. Got them problems. Got the BMW problems. Just had to buy expensive tire for this stupid Mercedes yesterday. Because somebody I know hit. It wasn't my fault. It ain't never his fault. It ain't my fault. It was something in the road at dark time and I didn't see it. Busted my damn tire. Man. We could have died. We sure could have. That tire was ate up, wasn't it? Ate all the way up on the word. That was crazy. But it was still driving. That's what was crazy. I mean, it wasn't even a smart tire. But you had to drive slow. Yeah. Now you can drive fast because I fixed it. So. Went to get it fixed. So is everybody ready to go back to start going back to church? I'm ready to start going back to church for real. I do my little praise and worship. And thank you, Ryan. Yes, the Chiefs and the Bucks. Let's hope to see that. Because my Bucks ain't been to the playoffs in about 20 some years. Super Bowl at that, anyway. You know, we just Mine finally hit the years. We just finally hit the week. We was in the wild card, and look at us now. Mm, mm, mm. You know what? You're going to cry if y'all lose. Mm, yeah. When we made it this far, we better not lose. You think? I hit a, um, Diana, I hit a, um, some, something metal. All I heard was ding, 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 in the middle of the road. And all of a sudden, the car started. I don't know. Yes, Rhinos. Rhinos Nation, yes. No, let me tell you what he does. 
Jeanette, it's rims on these car. This car, you don't need no <laughs> rims, cause you hit bumps. You do this, you do that. So this right here, every bump in the road. But you was complaining about me. Yeah, that car and I told him, I said, you must can't see, cause you trying to miss the bumps, but then you end up hitting the potholes or whatever. That's in the street. They got bad streets out here too. That's hold on, bad street. It's very bad. You don't need rims, but hold that thought. Anybody, okay. anybody that's in Virginia. Please go check out my rhinos, Virginia Beach rhinos. Um, they we have practices every Saturday between twelve one o'clock. I think the latest practice starts at two o'clock. Um, I know we're looking for some more people. As of right now, I can't play until I finish everything up. But please go check us out. Go to uh, Virginia Beach rhinos. On the, on the website and go check our schedule out, please. And we have jerseys on sale, which is $35. So, um, my jersey, 51, I mean, yeah, it's 51, right? 50, 51 is on sale. Like, matter of fact, yeah. It's 50. <laughs> I can't even remember. It's hanging out. It's 50 on sale. $35. $35. Hey, Monique. So, please check us out. And, yeah, and I just want to say, too, y'all keep... Tina Weber in y'all's prayers, please, because she's going through it, you know. Her husband is ailing really bad, you know. Tina's a good friend, and just pray for her. You know, she has to deal with that, and now she's trying to deal with the business that's going to be opening this year, you know. So I need everybody to pray for Tina. Just offer her a friendly conversation or Ask her how she's doing. Call and check on her. See how she's doing. Because I'm sure she would do it for you. You know. But yeah. She's going through it. I pray for my buddy. Mm. And her business will be opening. Still. Even though she has all that going on. She's still working hard to get this business open. Like I said. Me and Glenda's helping her. And supporting her with it all. I'll be coming down there in March. To help her get everything set up. To get and find a place for it so yeah just pray for Tina and also I need people to don't forget where I'm at I'm 663 Ivy Avenue with Newport News come get your food come right on down we got um hopefully by he next he can make month. a sandwich now <laughs> I sure he can he can do a sausage egg and cheese <laughs> now and a steak with a steak egg and cheese mm -hmm, I sure can he can hey Tina Hey, Don. So, yeah, he can make a sandwich now. So, I have to give it to you. Your sandwiches did sell. I was really surprised. Them. And they weren't even smushed. They was, like, fluffy and really nice. Can't be dogging me. But it ain't me. I don't care. <laughs> I don't cook. Can't be dogging me. I do. I try to do it all. And I'm, always, I'm also always looking for new recipes. Always out there. Especially desserts. Those don't never last. Mm -hmm. I could fill my dessert um, thing up one day, come back the next day, they're gone. So it's like I'm baking every day or every other day. So I can't complain. I guess that's a good thing. Things are selling. But I do got to do more advertising. Which we'll be shooting a commercial. Oh, yeah, I'm getting a commercial. And I'm going to put it up on the billboard that's coming. Yes, we do deliver to Norfolk. Okay. Yes, it, everything. everything. February, starting February the 1st, mm -hmm. um, you're going to have three types of deliveries. You're going to have Thug mm -hmm. Money come deliver to you if you want to. And then you're going to have Grubhub and uh, DoorDash. And DoorDash. Yeah, so, I'm doing all three. The only one I haven't done yet is Uber Eats. But I'm going to do that one, too. And I have a whole new revamp menu. So that one I put up, maybe I shouldn't have really put it up because it's going to be null and void um, after February 1st. I got a new menu coming out. I changed some things. A lot of things I changed, really. Of course, pricing and different type of combos and stuff. I'm going to be selling my own tea now. Yeah, I took it from the Chinese people. <laughs> I went and got my little cups like them, and I'm going to make my tea and sell it just like them. I sure am. 
so but everything is everything is going good I can't complain I think if I would have still been in Oklahoma I don't think I would have just really done it. I would just say that work my little nine to five eleven to seven whatever I was doing but you know out here it was a change and we're about to change again <laughs> next again. year yeah next year hopefully if things go well I'm going to be opening something up in Miami because I'm thinking about that's where I'm we're really thinking about making our home is Miami Florida so I don't know I'm still on the fence about that so and like I said, I'll be going to uh, Carolina. An uh, opportunity has arisen. Arise. What is arise? Arisen. Oh, Something. Yeah. Rose. Whatever. There. Hey, Gwen. Oh, oh, I didn't know you lived in Texas, Gwen. You like it? Oh, oh, oh. But yeah, so everything is going good. I never thought that I would be doing what I'm doing now. But like I said, Somebody God is good. He, yeah, you did push me. So I pushed you too. <laughs> <laughs> to do what you, oh, let me tell you about him. Let me tell you about him. This is like therapy for me. Really? For real? Hey, cousin. Dion. Labash. 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 Okay, let me tell you about him. So he wanted to start the lawn care business. Okay. We went and bought a truck. We went and bought all the stuff that needed to be bought. So, I'm working for him. So, I said, how much I'm making an hour? First, he said $5 an hour. <laughs> what? <laughs> Me? And it's hot. I'm chunky. You're going to be sweating. So, he said $5 an hour. So, just because I didn't do something his way. Now, I know about cutting lines because when I lived in Tulsa, I always it's did my own just way. just cutting lines. I did my Thank own you. thing. Single parent. Did my own thing. I'm used to that. Then he going to fire me. How you going to fire me? Because yeah. I ain't did what you did. Yeah. So, easy. no. I would never work for him. Ever. Look. I'm going to tell you like this. When it comes to <laughs> line care, yeah, I always. Because that's what his degree is in. I always learn. Well, who wanted a degree in? What was that degree in? Um, lawn La care. Landscaping. <laughs> yeah. From A through Z, I went to off uh, ODU Father Judge Road in Lynchburg. The only reason why I got that because um, the computer class, it was full up. My mom taught me how to um, build computers from scratch. So I started taking computers apart at home. And then she was like, and, and I also got in trouble in school. So they, I got kicked out. So I went to job court. And that's how I ended up doing lawn care because they didn't have a class for me. Their class was full. Mm, well, that's not my idea to do. But originally, computer repair, that's what I was trying to do. Well, okay. But that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheapskate. I ain't working for him ever again. A lot of fire and hire. Mm. Need some money. If you can't do what you told... While you're working, then I don't need you because at the end of the day, I don't want my clients to look at me funny. Like, you didn't do this correct because the first thing I do is walk through. I take a walk through by myself and then I do it by myself to make sure that's how they want it. And then after that, I will have a crew from then on after that to do it, but I show them. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, if you can't do it correctly, then I don't need you. And I also, I'm going to be needing some PCAs. And CNAs, because I've been turning down cases because, for real, this restaurant this restaurant has took up my life, it seems like. I'm there babysitting it every day and neglecting my other business. So, I had somebody that needed care for their loved one what, last week, and I had to turn it down. And I really don't deal with a lot of people who I know that that's in the field like that, that I can throw cases to them, to their company, or this and that. But, hey, I'm going to get it together. I'm working on me, like I said, 2021. Mm -hmm. I got to learn how to multitask all these businesses that I'm trying to do. I need to just really just focus on one, but I need more than one. There's just a lot of different things I want to do. And... I am. I'm working with um, Tanya Davis in um, Carolina. 
Greensboro, Carolina. We're starting a new lingerie line for plus size girls and everything. Can't nobody steal my name because I've already got it trademarked and everything. Thirsty. But that's going to be coming out soon. We've been working on that. And I need to get my little niece, Danae, to start sketching some stuff for me, too. So we're working on that together. We're going to have to make a trip to California to some designers. So be looking out for that, too, because that's going to be coming. So what other business are you trying to do? What other business is anybody else trying to do? I ain't trying to do nothing Because I like to invest. My music in this lawn cap takes everything for me and then trying to be at the restaurant so I'm good for right now he done made a few sandwiches now he's trying to be there y'all really <laughs> really yep. he done made a few sandwiches yep okay okay <laughs> if that's what you think yep no I have to give you props you, you did good you done moved up from cleaning the cleaning the um Fryer, is that what you say? <laughs> Clean the fryer and washing dishes to making sandwich breakfast sandwiches. He'd have moved on up. Yep, just like George Jefferson. <laughs> Move it on up. Mm -hmm. So, so I think, I think twenty twenty one is gonna be good for everybody. I want to see everybody win. Everybody needs to win. But people don't see it like that. Invest in yourself. And that's one thing I did learn. Invest in yourself. I'm going to always say this. Stop investing in gold and invest in land. That's the smartest move you can ever make. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. So. I understand. Oh, I meant to say, yesterday I walked into a store, right? Man, look. This dude... Matter of fact, we was at the Walmart gas station putting in the walk on the gas, right? I walk up. This dude bending over all draws. And all you seen was a skid mark. Then you have a a lady right behind him. She turned to me and looked at me like, uh, why you ain't just saying pull up your pants? Like that's the fashion, like what, you sagging. Sagging your pants. But it's more girls out here sagging than the men. They sag harder than the men. But yeah, I'm talking do. about the men. Like, you cannot have a dirty booty and sagging your pants. You just can't do that. And then mm -hmm. you think you look good. Well, they think they do. I don't want to see no man's butt. Just That's point blank period. Why Why do other men have to see your butt? What, you gay or something? I'm just saying, is that that's what you want? If that's what you want, all you gotta say is I like men instead of having your butt hanging out, so another man can walk up and see everything you got. I don't want to do that. If I if I'm gonna see a butt, I want to see a woman's butt, not a man's butt. And I don't want to see the draw. But it doesn't mean that you have to go that way because you're sagging. Some people are just what well, that came from. Okay. Sagging, I don't know where it came from. Okay, I don't know nothing do. about sagging. I ain't no sagging man. Sagging your pants. Sag. Sagging your pants sag. came from slavery. That means you was already broken into. When, Who told when, you that? What you mean? Do you do do your history? I think from Vianne. Do, do your black history. history. <laughs> what you mean? The uh, masters used to rape the men. Uh, they used to take the men from their families, go rape them, and go sell them or put them to work. And then it became to uh, let the other slave owners know that they've been broken in. They pay, their pants have Hey, Sarah. Have been I miss my Sarah. So, honestly, it, it came from slavery. It ended up in jail. Now it's ended up in the street like it's a popularity and... Like is is it is it's, popular? Like it's our culture, and that's not because people. Black people ain't the only ones that sag. I've seen true. a little white boys sag I'm, and all that this too. Is so that's period. some blaming on black people. I'm, it's period. Oh. But I see more of our black culture sagging. I mean, I see some white people, but it's more of our black culture. Because some of them go harder. But you have to think, where did it actually come from? So to me, it seems like you're broken into. When you sagging your pants, especially when you're over thirty years old and you're still sagging your pants. Yeah, put a belt on. Please stop wearing tight clothes, them tight pants, and trying to sag. 
take off your sister jeans and go put on some jeans that fit you. When I say it don't have to be you know saggy. You know one thing I be thinking about sometimes when I be seeing people sag like way, way low? Say jeans too short. <laughs> they jeans too. It's crazy because they can buy them. skinny jeans be short. For yeah, real. like them skinny jeans be tight, tight, tight. Yeah, but then they be sagging like what was the purpose? To their knees purpose? almost, yeah. Putting on pants. What is the purpose? You got to lose a little weight. You looking like the clumps right here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just don't He's understand. He's rising to that sad history. It's, it's the hey, history Robin, though. you up? Mm-hmm. Hey, Kristen. So, what do y'all think about the sagging? Anything we talked about? What do y'all feel? I feel men should be men and pull up their pants and put a belt on. Be men. And what's wrong with our culture? For when it starts with the parents, hey son, pull up your pants before you leave my house. Pull up your pants and put a belt on. You feel me? That's how it should be. I understand kids get out the house and want to pull their pants down, but beat it into their heads. Tell them every day, pull up your pants, son. Pull up your pants when you go out in public. Pull up your pants. But it doesn't start in the house. We think it's all cool. And it's not. Gwen said, just always help each other. Help each other. And I love you guys so much. Stay safe. So happy to see your face. I'm glad to see you too, Gwen. Yeah, but I don't know. But hell, y'all old, these old men is doing it too. They, so it needs to start with the grown-ups. So the, so the kids it starts can, in the house. That's what I'm saying. It starts in the house. But, but some some guys, some young men have other male figures that's not in the home. Still put so that's my point. It, it it starts in the house, whether the female or the male. It don't have to be necessarily a male being in the house to say, pull up your pants. Because my grandma, when she was living, pull up them pants. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see your drawers. Pull up them pants. Do you think other women want to see your drawers? Some might. Well, some might. But grown, yeah, she used to tell me grown women don't like that. Then that's something I have to tell Jigga to pull his pants up now. Because he running around here sagging. <laughs> I don't know where he got that from. But I have to tell him to pull his pants up. I'm just saying. Yeah. It's, so. it don't, it's, it's not a good look at all. Now, I don't like looking at me and booty because that's not the way I rock. Okay? So uh, anytime I see you sagging, Hey, can you pull up your pants? Because I don't want to see that. And they probably going to say, no, food. mind your own business because I want to sag. I'm a sag. What you going to say? Okay. You be, you be <laughs> true to me. That's what you want to do? Okay. But I just don't want to see uh, it. You feel me? So this is what I think. I think we need to start bringing fam- Sunday dinners back into the mix of things. Well, okay. When since, COVID is over. You don't since you think you, so? Since you said that then. I plan, so? yeah, that, that's why I'm about to say this. We used to take one day out of a week just for me and her. You know, nothing, no work, no nothing. It's just me and her. And that used to be a Sunday, which she got in the way from because that's the only thing I asked for. I don't care what you do during the weekday. Sunday is my time. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, we need people. I, all families, I think, need to start bringing Sundays back. And I understand they work. How do y'all feel about like if one is working more than the other and you never get to see that person really? You know? Because of the long hours, all the days. That's how you I can mean- honestly say I missed out a lot on on my my daughter on doing some things because I did work a lot. I did. I, I did miss out on a lot with Jasmine. That's a big controversy because mm-hmm. people say, I got to work to pay these bills, but you also have to think, if you got to work to pay them bills, you also got in a relationship to do what? So if you want to work and just pay all them bills, you need to let that person know, hey, go ahead and do what you do because I'm never, I'm never going to be home. That means that's a sign of just you be by yourself. Yeah, be by yourself at that point. 
because at the end of the day, you're going you're gonna to get yourself upset because you're going too long and your significant other. I don't work like cheating. I used to. I used to work all the time. You cannot get mad because that comes a time where you have to, you and your significant other have to put in time for your relationship because if you don't, baby, it's going to be, if you're married, <laughs> you're going to get divorced. Uh, if you just in a relationship, that next person going to leave or cheat on you. It's like that time. one man said that you had said on Facebook. Yeah, it's just it's just a known fact. So people, please stop saying, "Hey, I gotta work all these hours to pay the bills," but you also gotta work in your relationship to keep your relationship uh, flourishing and progressing. Because if you don't, then what's the purpose of being in a relationship? Yeah, spend time with your kids, do stuff with your kids, and that's. So that's a lot of things today, though. People don't spend time with their kids, So too. stop using, I got to pay the bills and all this as a cop-out. Because at the end of the day, that's really a cop-out. Meaning that you don't want to take the time to actually spend with your kids. Or your significant other. Or just spend with your family. Now, Hell, that, some kids make you want to run away from home. Now, by what I mean by saying that is... Some a lot of people have two days off, one day off. Some uh, if you work on a shipyard, you have seven days to work. So what I'm telling you, if you know you have two days off, one day off, and they call you to come to work, don't be like yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell them no, flat out. You need time with your family, just like they call you to come into work. Guess what? While you in work, guess what they're doing? Spending time with their family, spending time. And that's with what their a lot kids. of upper management people do. You know that, right? Yeah, I know. I know I was one of them. So while you're home <laughs> working all these hours, feeling like you gotta work and you gotta kiss butt and go in and work, guess what they're doing? They out having vacations, spending time with your family, and you're not doing it at all because in your mind, hey, I gotta work. Yeah, he called me in, she called me in, my boss need me. Da da. No, spend time with your family. Point blank, but period. Stop using. I gotta pay these bills as a cop out. Because that's what it all boils down to. is a cop-out. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Seymour. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You like your new hat? I love it. Got to get Louis Bland to get you a, to get you a Stetson. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I need me a new hat because I got a perform coming up. Um, my performance, it should be, what, February the 6th, and as far as I know, after that, I'll be leaving and going on tour. Oh, boy. What well, I'm going to be joy. right on Ivy, in, at Ivy Avenue cooking every day, open seven days, trying to get it where I can get somebody that can be me and work the weekends. Just do my Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. That would be that would be great. But I'm just such a control freak sometimes that I have to do things myself. Ryan said, "Real talk, it sure is, Ryan. This is a day in life of 2021 now. Everybody got issues. Everybody got things." Don't be afraid to talk about them. Don't get in your feelings. As you see. But he pisses me off sometimes. I do get in my feelings and I be mean. Very much. Nine times out of ten, <laughs> we up here, we we be talking about ourselves. As you sometimes. Can see. Not all the time. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> so, don't be afraid because we, we giving you the real. You know, we're not coming up here being fake. Oh, this and that. No, we giving you real problems, real issues mm-hmm. that can be handled just by talking you know, and communicate. Just communicate. That's all you have mm-hmm. to do. Yes, what, Robin? Robin better be at work. Hmm. But the Bucks play at 305. It's 319. It's time to wrap it up. Yes. Don't she forget. Cook my food for my game. All I said what I was cooking today is what? I don't care. You better cook my food for my game. All you getting is greens, candy yams, cornbread, and chicken. Chicken. <laughs> That's what our life is going to start consisting of next week. Chicken and fish. Baked so, 
and boiled or broiled. No more frying the smoothies. Mm -hmm. I gotta call my sister and ask what our snacks can be or Angie Kirsch. She know she do she does it too. Um I think it can only be like I can't have nuts, so that knocks me out the ballpark on nuts because I think that's one of the snacks. But I think you can have tuna and boiled eggs, vegan mayonnaise. What else? Got a bunch okay. of yogurt. Yeah. Yeah, we got a bunch of yogurt. But yeah, that's what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do, Lena, I'm gonna call you later. But yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. That's gonna start tomorrow. So we better eat up some stuff today. I'm gonna oh. eat up some stuff today. I ain't gonna even lie. I'm just gonna eat what I can. I'm just gonna be greedy today. But don't forget, y'all, pray for Tina Weber, please. And don't forget, if you're hungry, you want to eat, come to 663 Ivy Avenue. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm located. Seven days a week, except today, because the grill's messed up. Got to get it fixed. But anyway, like I said, stay classy, stay blessed. And don't get no stress. This is your boy, Thug Money. And this is Jeanette with Jazzy Cakes. We are out. Love y'all all. See you next Sunday. Thank you. And please tap in. Yep. Bye.